Andrea Carter, Rebecca Lobo here, and we're going straight to the defending champions, LSU, three versus 11 seed, Middle Tennessee, Kim Mulkey, a mainstay in the Sweet 16. 16 appearances and 21 trips to the NCAA tournament. But Andrea, in the first half of this game, Middle Tennessee was unfazed and unbothered. Yeah, you have to give Middle Tennessee so much credit. They executed their game plan. They pushed in transition. They were shutting down the paint on the defensive end. And LSU did not take great shots in the first half. Middle Tennessee came into this game having won 20 in a row. They were looking for the 31st win, which would have set a new program record. And at the break, they were up 36-32 on the road against the defending champs. But in the third quarter, Rebecca, as you might imagine, LSU finally showed up. Yeah, LSU came out with a much different defensive intensity. And as a result, they were able to get looks like this out in transition. They only had six uh, points off turnovers in the first half, 16 in the second. Turnover after turnover led to fast breaks, just much better looks offensively because of their defense in the second 20 minutes. From down fourth the half to a resounding 83-56 win to advance to the Sweet 16. The defending champs are moving on. And it was that defense that Rebecca was mentioning that this team credited for that comeback. Flaugé Johnson knocking down the three in the corner. Get hype, Tigers. You are moving on. To the next round. Haley Van Lith didn't play well. That, didn't have to though. That this this play right here, this was the foul. So this is their 6-6 MTSU, 6-6 post player. Gave Angel Reese trouble. She fouled out in the third quarter of the game, and Angel began to cook from there. Things started to unravel for MTSU. And sometimes, you know, the defending champs that look, you, you can't play great every single game, no matter who you are, sometimes early on and caught up to him. But again, give credit, as you said, to Middle Tennessee came in there with an effort that was worthy of having that first half lead. Ooh. And again, they Bye -bye. do get the win. 83-56 after the game. Flaw J. Johnson talking about that defense. I told Haley, we got to cut the head off the snake. You know what I'm saying? And she really took that challenge on because they, they, they point guard. She's little, but she's mighty, and she makes things happen for them, and she breaks down defenses. So Haley gave us the opportunity to be able to get in some passing lanes for the bigs to be able to work their mojo. So that's all Haley Van Liff right there. It, it's fun. I mean, I couldn't hear at one point in the PMAC. I, I didn't hear the play calls. I couldn't hear what was going on, and it was so much fun. I mean, I love playing um, here at, at LSU and everything going on. It was so much fun, and now to be able to advance for my second year here, it's just amazing. I wish we can take this crowd and, and bring it everywhere Man. we go, but I know they're going to come to Albany, and I hope to see everybody in Albany. All right, so Reese finished the game with 20 points, 11 rebounds, marked her eighth straight double-double in the NCAA tournament dating back to last season. That's the third longest streak by any player in the last 25 years years. Andrea, as we were listening to the Tigers respond there, there was something you heard that really stood out to you. You know, I really appreciated Flage's response because for people who didn't watch this game, Haley Van Lith struggles. She didn't start in the second half. She was emotional during the game. She only scored four points. Flage has been the glue for this team all season long, in my opinion. Flage played phenomenally, but for her to give Haley Van Lith credit defensively, in that, in that moment to try to bring Haley back with them mm. and connect them with this success so that Haley feels like she's a part of it. That is such a big leadership piece for Flage. Her growth this season, her maturity this season, not just her play on the court, but that's a really big leadership moment. I was proud of Flage for that. If you're a Tiger fan or maybe a fan looking for a reason for the Tigers to lose, do you look more towards what happened in the first half, Rebecca, or the, what they did in the second half? I think you have to feel really good about how they turned things around because in their first round matchup against Rice, they only won that game by 10 points. Mm -hmm. They did not look great. The first half of this game, they did not necessarily look connected or energi energized on the defensive end, but they were able to turn it around. I think you have to feel pretty good with the momentum they are carrying now when they head to Albany. Again, third win when trailing at halftime this season. So they do have that championship pedigree. And another thing that will just make fans a little anxious was MTSU. Going into this game, Rebecca and I talked about MTSU really only plays six players. Three of them fouled out. Their center fouled out in the third quarter. And mm -hmm. so... MTSU really lost their mojo without those players on the floor. If LSU runs into a team that has depth, has players coming off the bench, and they get off to a slow start the way they have in these first two rounds, it could be a lot harder to get back into those games. All right, well, the game of the afternoon uh, in Columbus, second seed Ohio State taking on seven seeded Duke. Duke pulls the upset on the road, reaching the Sweet 16 for the first time under Kara Lawson. 
You guys are in the Sweet 16 for the first time in a long time. <laughs> what makes this group so special? I mean, we just work hard, you know. Whether whoever's against us, we're going to give it all 110%, you know. We love each other and we're going to play for each other no matter the environment that we're in. Go keep dancing. Congratulations, Reagan. Yeah. What an incredible uh, performance by our players. Um, you guys know this covering this game. This game's about players. And if you get a good group of players and you get them to believe in one another and sacrifice for one another, then you can do something special. You know, Reagan's performance was, you know, a, an incredible performance on the road leading us. And we're happy to be advancing and excited about the opportunity in Portland. Andrea, you were talking about Reagan Richardson during the highlight, uh, 25 last game, 28 in this one, but she leads the team in scoring at only 11 points a game. So how has she been able to more than double up her output in these NCAA tournament games? You know, first of all, it's one of the best things about March, right? Players find their stride. Players start to play with so much confidence. To me, the most impressive thing about Reagan Richardson really all season is she's never four shots. Mm. And so far in this tournament, there have just been opportunities. She's never four shots in these first two games. She's just taken what the defense has given her. Duke's been able to move the ball, and she's been able to create those opportunities and make the most of them. I think that's a real key, is Duke is known all season long as a defensive-minded team, not mm. a team that you have to worry about scoring a lot of points. They go against an Ohio State team. Is potent on the offensive end today? Not only lock them down, but score 75 points of their own. You heard Kara Lawson talk about it. It feels like this team is really coming together, in particular on the offensive end because they've had it defensively all year long. And clearly a disappointing finish for Ohio State and their fans considering at one point you thought they might be a number one seed and all of a sudden now they are they gone before the Sweet 16. Yeah, for sure. All right, how about the number one team in the country looking to get to 34-0? and 0, South Carolina taking on North Carolina. And Malaysia Fawali came out at the beginning of this game like, ladies and gentlemen, please, would you bring your attention to me because she was doing everything and all things. And it starts, as good teams do, with defense. She had a steal. Of course, she takes it all the way for the layup. South Carolina up seven early. And then two minutes to go in that quarter. I love this play because Fawali goes to her go-to move, try to go behind the back, and then couldn't get it off, but she stayed with it and ended up getting the three ball in the corner. And it starts with what she did on the defensive end, and it's interesting to remember when North Carolina played South Carolina in the regular season, Dawn Stanley only played full Wiley three minutes. She was upset mm. with how she was defending. Well, fast forward now to today's game. She was all over it defensively and offensively. How about that first quarter, 28 to 8, 33rd time holding opponents to single digits in a quarter. Let's go to the second quarter now. Tessa Johnson hits three, 18-0 run for South Carolina. And this is what makes this South Carolina team so dangerous they have multiple threats from beyond the three-point line and they also have size on the inside so that's six seven Camila Cardoso rolling to the basket hard and then you have a freshman Malaysia full Wiley so we just saw one three in the half court then an over-the-top pass then a three in transition here's another three in transition they score in so many ways they were up 37 at the break second largest halftime lead in program history in the NCAA tournament second half pretty much more of the same for Wiley where she at stepping back knocking down a three. She finished with 20 points, also had three steals and three blocks, speaking to that defensive effort, and South Carolina wins it easily, 88 to 41. They go to the Sweet 16 for the 10th straight year, and again, they improve to 34 and 0, the only undefeated team in women's college basketball this season, or men's basketball, anybody basketball really this season. Uh, take a look at the second string embarrassment, the SC bench against the UNC starters, and all this does, Rebecca, it just speaks to the depth that uh, Dawn Staley has at her disposal. Yeah, without question. And South Carolina is the deepest team in the country. Dawn Staley knows how to keep putting bodies in, fresh bodies that come at you in waves. They can score. They can put pressure on you defensively. Uh, just incredible how they've been able to, to really utilize that depth all season long. Let's hear some reaction from the winning South Carolina squad. I mean, growing up, I was always like, wow, I want to play in that NCAA tournament. So being here, like, it's amazing. I, don't, I can't, like, express my feelings, but it's amazing. Okay. <laughs> word for word. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't played like that in a, in a super long time. And we we actually were talking about that in, in the coaches locker room. Like, we haven't played well all together. Like, every single one of our players made an impact coming into the game. And we needed a, a performance like this. And hopefully uh, playing this good of a basketball can be contagious throughout the the rest of the way. All right, Andrea, you were talking about those threes we saw, especially from Full Wiley and Heller getting set up. They made eight of the first ten in the game. 
on the season, they are third in the country in three-point shooting, but last year they ranked 170th. So how did that year's squad become this year's squad from deep? Well, two things, and this is what's the most impressive about South Carolina and their coaching staff for me. They fill that hole in two ways. They bring in Tahina Pau-Pau, who's a transfer from Oregon and a sharp shooter, to immediately fill that need and be a veteran point guard. They also bring in freshmen. Tessa Johnson and Mylasia Full Wiley. So it's not just from the transfer portal that they fill this hole. They also find freshmen that they need and that can step in and are ready to play. It's phenomenal what Coach Staley has been able to do with this team. You have to credit to how she has had a willingness to let them play a completely different style this year than they did a year ago. Not only because they have three point shooters and can utilize that, they're playing better in transition. Uh, they still do all the things they did well a season ago. They still yeah. rebound like crazy. They still score in the paint like crazy, but they are playing a different style, a faster pace, looking for more threes because that's the personnel she has this year. And they've added these new pieces, but also their returners are better. Camilla Cardoso is better. Chloe Kitts barely played last season. She's had multiple performances where she has been that girl for the team. Raven Johnson got waved off last year. She's able to step down, step in and knock down threes. So it's the ability to bring in transfers that fit in. Don't forget Ashlyn Watkins. Ashlyn Watkins, too. She comes <laughs> off the bench and gets dunks. I was looking at when we had that graphic up with the South Carolina bench. Yeah. I'm looking at those four players, and I'm like, that's a starting lineup for SEC. multiple yes. other teams in the SEC. You know how many SEC teams would do anything <laughs> for those four players to be yeah. their starters? It's just remarkable. And you mentioned Cardoso. is her first game back, obviously, from that one-game suspension for what happened in the SEC championship game. She goes for 12 and 10, so she gets the double-double. Much more from these ladies throughout the next couple days, next couple weeks, as we get closer and closer to the women's Final Four.